And there's that awkward part. <laughs> okay. So obviously I know the district uh, location, all of those things, but if there is anything about location um, that you think is unique to like the environment of your school and the, you know, demographics and things like that, I can include that too. So I'll let you go in and talk about that part. Um, one of the most unique things, well, we pride ourselves on being a community-based school um, and community is big. Um, most, a lot of our students are within walking distance. We are um, right here in downtown South Frankfurt, blocks away from the Capitol building, um, very connected to a lot of uh, state and local government entities. Um, until 2007, we, we didn't have a cafeteria. Uh, and just that community feel um, of, of students being not only a part of the school community, but the community as a whole um, has never left. Um, we have a senior internship program that all our seniors are involved in, and they spend half of their day, their senior year, out in the community, working for local businesses, exploring their passions, learning generalized skills outside of the school building as well. Um, so really, that's what I would underscore the most is just the community aspect we're able to offer. Um, and that pulls in a, a lot of um, students from surrounding districts as well, just looking for something different in, in that aspect. Perfect. The proximity is a big thing for you guys, like having that proximity is key because I know for us, a lot of the battles we face is with transportation um, and funding for transportation. Like we've been able to facilitate transportation to ATCs and JCTC, right. but not um, as many kids as we would like to support that can't do co-op Right. because of that. So are they working a lot in local business, literally down in that area by the school? So um, that it's really expanded, especially as we've gotten more tuition students. Um, when yeah. I first started here seven years ago as a teacher, um, we didn't have a, a real mobile population. We, students didn't want to learn to drive. They didn't have cars. Um, and, and that kind of preference has changed some. So students are starting to venture out a little more. And I think some of that is because we've increased our, our student population by about 120 in students in seven years. So we, when I started, we were right above 200. We're about 325 now. So 125 doesn't seem like a lot. It's about a third of our school. Mm -hmm. um, and again, those students are being pulled from, from various surrounding schools. Um, so, so that's had some impact. Um, our district does support um, transportation as far as like athletics and ATCs. We're partnered with actually Mercer County ATC. So we send students down to Mercer County um, every day. Um, so those transportation supports are in place. Um, and, and really the proximity of being downtown, having access to, to businesses, corporations, the um, state courthouse here, um, we have a student interning with the governor's office press corps right now. Those cool opportunities exist. I've talked to leaders down in Nelson County and they've been really um, big on trying to build an internship program and their stranglehold is the bourbon industry. That's their core market and their core industry and they can't put students there. So they're constantly looking for places to assign students. We fortunately um, haven't had to face as many of those issues, which is really, allowed us to do some cool things. Sure. Yeah, I think it, well, as we all know, it just drills down to money all the time, <laughs> money right. and staffing um, typically. Right. So totally understand that part. Um, if there was a quote um, that you would say is either your mantra as a leader or more so your mantra as a leader of this school in particular, maybe, because maybe that's changed and shifted as your roles have changed in education. Um, is there something you would like featured that is a quote about your school itself or your personal perspective. Um, Try to, to live by and, and no pressure if, if not. Yeah, if you know, off it's the okay. top of my head. I, just I don't know if that's my area of expertise. No, no, I'm, I'm not a fluffy it. kind of talking yeah. person either. I'm like right to the point, let's get right. it done. Like, so I just wanted to make sure I offered yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I could dig into uh, certain aspects of things, but just um, those shirts to put on or slogans to put on shirts. Uh, yeah. Our previous friends, well, he was a woo guy. When you do the strength finder, he was all about woo. And he was kind of my mentor. Um, mm -hmm. He was my first assistant principal over at, in Jessamine County and then he came up, Mr. Lyons, yes. he came over here and I, I came with him. 
um, and that was something that he was really good at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. Struggle to like find said, my path. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're good. And like yeah. I said, if somebody asked me that, I'd be like, uh, I have maybe one for like my life, but not, yeah. I don't know. What would I say? <laughs> like our right. vision, um, yeah. which I can put your all's mission or vision. Do you have that on your school website by chance? Um, yes. Uh, it's, okay. Would be what the district has. And I believe it's, we're a community-based school that's yeah. Okay. I'm going to just kind of include that there because it'll be nice to kind of have it scripted maybe underneath the picture and, and things For like sure. that. Um, so you've already kind of spoken to the unique practices piece a little bit with the senior population and, and opportunities that make you unique. Um, is there any other programs or opportunities or dual credit or anything like that um, that are unique to your school that you're able to offer maybe at a larger scale or completely different than any other districts offering? Um, we um, have a pretty thriving dual credit program. We're partnered with KSU for an associate's path, pathway. Um, I believe this year we have eight students that are on track to graduate with their associate's degree. Um, and while that's an opportunity for students, that's not always our goal for students. Um, our big goal is to try to get every student to experience dual credit successfully. Um, so we have um, Professors that come in from um, KSU, we're partnered with UK now um, through the Next Gen Dual Credit Program, um, and, and that's been a great experience, just the level of support those professors and the organization has provided, um, and, and their philosophy matches ours. We always try to put a um, school-based teacher mentor in there to help facilitate those classes, to guide the students, and really teach them how to be um, those college students. Um, because we want all students to be able to leave Frankfurt High knowing that they can be successful in college, whether that's their path right now, 10 years from now, or maybe never, um, they can always share that with their children down the road that, hey, yeah, I took a college class and I was successful. Um, you can too. So. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's a big thing we're trying to push too, especially because we're trying to improve our um, representation of minority groups in right. our dual credit programs. And, you know, you have kiddos that have parents that never went. And I mean, no one probably would think that like kids I've had conversations with, I guess my parents didn't go either. Right. Like, it's not just you. I know it seems that way, but it's really not just you. And they immediately tell themselves, well, it's not my path because they didn't, or right. it's just too much of an uphill battle. And it's hard to remove those barriers, but that's awesome. Um, especially the outreach of them coming into the building right. is huge. Cause a lot of our um, dual credit here, is primarily online just because of the nature of you can get so many more options online right. than you can on campus but that's awesome and it's amazing to see <clears throat> the different impact of those for the facilitating teacher and the students when mm -hmm. they have that interaction with the professor the success rate goes up so much and we've been hit or miss and i have conversations with our teachers because we we have some classes that are total flops they they get not great professors. They don't understand how to do the dual credit side of it. They don't follow up with the facilitating teacher. Um, and those can be headaches and nightmares. And uh, unfortunately, that's what turns students off too, because they don't experience success. They just experience stress. Sure. Um, so as we grow, we try to facilitate those um, classes that we know students can be successful and get those wins. In. So, so even just one other piece on that, when you say the partnerships you've built, so Funding wise, does the district pay additional like monies to have them coming on campus certain um, times? Or? No, that's really just been a proximity okay. thing. And we tried to work with the dual credit coordinators at um, KSU. Um, they're primarily the ones that will come um, onto campus. Um, and then once we, we have those partnerships and they've experienced kind of what we offer, um, and we've had feedback they like these classes more because they have that support from the teachers. The, the high school teachers are helping keep the students focused and on track. Um, you're not having that new freshman experience at the university. So, yeah, that, yeah, and then, that's um, cool. and then just from a, the dual credit standpoint, um, financially our, our district has contributed to supporting that. As I said, we want all students to experience. We don't want any barriers. So um, they have their um, dual credit their two dual credit courses, they've got their work ready grants, but anything beyond that, the district fully supports um, students at the cost of those dual credit classes. Does that apply also to those that are on tuition? 
In the oh, district yes. or do they, okay, awesome. So they're on, they're paying tuition, but they still have those available things to them. Right. Okay, awesome. Uh, moving on from there, uh, what is your why in the profession? What kind of drew you to the profession or your why for serving in the role that you serve in? What was your motivator maybe to transition into that role? Um, Cause I know for me, like I had to really get myself outside of my comfort zone. Uh, personally, when I was deciding to apply for this role, I was like, my resume just says food on it. Like I wanted to, because I mean, think about it. If somebody looks at your resume and they're like, oh, sous chef, kitchen manager, taught culinary. So she can do all the things food, but what else can she do with education? Because they don't know those connections. Right. Um, and so that was kind of my why of, I want to diversify myself. I want to sit at tables with different people. I want to gain you know, perspective um, and just different experience. So I'm just curious what your why is. Um, mine has been really up leading up through education. It was kind of a, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I came around as I went. My parents were both educators. That's the world I grew up in. I went to college thinking I didn't want to do education at all. Um, I went to UK. I was a swimmer on the swim team. It, it really, I was in a place. That's what I was there for at that time. Um, I, I struggled in engineering classes because again, I was focused more on swimming. Um, mm -hmm. And, but I had a really bad professor in engineering and that kind of opened my eyes up to the skill set that my parents had and some teachers that I had. And it was like, maybe I'm needed in that. So I, I kind of changed my major. My senior year of college, I did a practicum over at Henry Clay High School. And I went in and I, again, was working around my swimming schedule for this practicum to get a hundred hours in. And the teacher, I had a great teacher. He was awesome, uh, a cooperating teacher. But he said, like, on the first day, try to come in the morning because those are my pre-AP classes. In the afternoon, we've got the collab classes, um, and they're a little rougher, so try to come in the morning. Well, I didn't have that luxury, mm -hmm. and really, I just fell in love with those afternoon classes um, and what the, the LBD students were doing um, and working with those. And that's when I was like, okay, I need to go this special ed route. Um, and, and really building those relationships, getting to know students. Um, as I entered into the education um, and full-time teaching, uh, Mr. Lyons hired me. I interviewed for an LBG, LBD job, and he put me in the MSD classroom. I was like, I don't want to do that. But again, it was very skills-based stuff. I got to know, grew to love those students and families. And then when we came, I came over to... Um, Frankfurt High, we were implementing the Summit Learning Platform. It was our first year, um, and you may know a little bit about it, but it's very um, skills-oriented. So all the grading is skills-based, um, and that's when it really dawned on me, like, this is what education needs to be about. Um, we can go the traditional route of embedding um, content knowledge and just hitting that um, rote memorization of things, but we're sending students out with knowledge and not skills. Um, and, and as we shaped that um, educational philosophy here at Frankfurt High to be very skills oriented, that's just what I knew I needed to, to be about. That, I think we just found your quote. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying that sounded like a pretty good quote. I might have to snip that together and type it up. All um, right. Yeah. I, <laughs> I agree uh, wholeheartedly because I think back and it's hard because I have a, a niece and a sister both in high school at Franklin County High School and uh, they actually both went to Second Street as well but then transitioned to county schools uh, one of them at high school and then my sister uh, transferred at seventh grade and so I struggle with wow you're learning this and the root skill the problem solving yeah but you're not going to remember any of this Right. It's not transferable, you know, like, I mean, right. no offense, but like the war in 1912, like, I, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember who, why I, none right. of that. like, I'm not saying it's not important and to be right. well-rounded, but you're right. It's like, those skills are everything right. um, for sure. Which kind of leads into the next question, actually, that you were just mentioning about um, does that summit learning platform, your LMS, and if there's others that you use um, that you can speak to, awesome, but has that helped with equity and improving access to resources for kids, for families, both? Um, how has that helped? Um, I, I think it does because it goes back to uh, the development of skills overall. Um, I have conversations with high school teachers all the time because high school teachers are very... Um, 
they have the expectation that students should come with a set of skills, mm -hmm. especially being in a Title I school, our kid, all our kids don't come with those skills, maybe because they had deficits when they started school that they've never overcome, maybe throughout school they've never had the support at home. Um, so we're always taking a step back and focusing on the building of those skills. Um, and that was my philosophy when I was a special education teacher here. Um, that skill development may be very different, um, but it's it's not that we're, uh, when you just have the curriculum that you're trying to get students to memorize that knowledge, um, that can be very one-sided or ethnocentric or not understanding um, the accessibility to those those students, but I think everybody has access to shape those skills wherever they are. Okay, um, moving on from there, is there a specific individual success story that you can speak to that you feel like you have contributed to the success of maybe in a particular student um, over a period of time or maybe a staff member that has been kind of under your purview that you feel like you've cultivated something in that has made a difference? I don't know if one individual student um, pops into mind. I have a, a, a several um, that are coming to mind. Uh, and the, the story I'll share with you is our partnership with Trailblazer right, right now. That's our um, technical school in Mercer County. We just had our first three students um, reach uh, uh, industry cert within that. Um, and the three students are on very different paths right now. One graduated at Christmas with his industry cert, he went right into the workforce. Um, this was a student that didn't, um, that has faced a lot of trauma, has a very high ACEs score, um, lives with his girlfriend's family, um, parents are not no longer in town, um, but we were able to give him that piece of success. Um, similarly, another student um, has more support at home, is a senior finishing his senior year, has that internship, or has that um, industry cert and now is able to move into an internship that hopefully builds into a career. Um, and then the third one is a junior um, who at his junior year was able to get that industry cert halfway through, um, is go continuing down in the technical school to, to pick up more um, industry certs, hopefully, and be able to go even further into a uh, um, internship for his full um, year next year. Um, so while those are all three different paths, I think it really shapes kind of our intentions and the individualized instruction that we're trying to provide all of our students. Um, each of those students come from very different backgrounds, which contributed to when they were able to get those industry certs. Sure. Um, but I think the success that I see is that we have a path for each of those students. Right. They're all completing the same program, but what they're doing with it is so different based right. on their own goals, for sure. That's great. Um, just because I'm curious, not part of the questions, really. Um, I know that there's the ATC, obviously, at Franklin County High School. Is it that they're maxed out and can't support um, additional kiddos? So it's not an ATC. It's a district run. Oh, that's um, right. It's a career and tech center, yeah. not an so, ATC. State so they center. could right. give us seats, but they don't have to. Um, so our closest ATC is the one in Mercer County. So we go with Anderson, Bergen, Mercer, and us. Um, and, and it definitely is. It's, I'm working on building a master schedule for next year, which is, seems near impossible because I have to build in an hour down and an hour back for right. a certain set of students and figure out how to get on four content classes in that time as well, but then also meet the needs of all other students. Um, um, so you said, it, I know it's an hour there, an hour back, because of course we have family and things like that there as well. But what about the Shelby County ATC? I'm just curious. I'm not saying things aren't amazing and great, but I'm like, oh, yeah, we're yeah. right here too. <laughs> and, and I don't know. Um, Sarah I think Green is Mercer one. County had just reached out to us and we were okay. grasping at any opportunities we can. Um, yeah. I'm all about exploring those opportunities if well, I would love to, I mean, if you don't mind, I'm not trying to overreach uh, by any means. And obviously great work's happening where you already are at, but uh, Dr. Green, Sarah Green is phenomenal. Um, okay. She's the principal at our ATC and they have uh, very high pass rates in dental and health sciences, industrial maintenance, welding, all of which um, 
right now have those uh, Kentucky Work Ready scholarships linked to because they're high demand um, as well. You know, if they offer dual credits within yes, those yes, every that's one, single one um, go ahead struggle we've had. They've had a lot of turnover in administration down there, and I think that was one reason they were trying to boost numbers so much. Mm -hmm. So they were reaching out to us sure. and Anderson and the um, local districts, and the opportunity presented itself. But that's one struggle that we've had is I've tried to get them to understand the, the need for those dual credits embedded um, yep. just for our post-secondary readiness rate. Um, th those work ready scholarships exist and, and students have a much higher ability to, to move on to the post-secondary if they've already experienced that success. And so those are the conversation I'm trying to get them on board with um, as well. Yes, actually, every single pathway at our ATC has dual credit, every single one of them. In fact, awesome. almost every single one of our career pathways here at the building level, like at Collins, it's very unique at Collins and Shelby County, but more so here, we have eight different career pathways here in-house. Yeah. Okay. And almost all of those have some form of dual credit as well. And if they don't now, within two years, the two or three that are left, they're working with Jefferson, obviously, to build those those yep. bridges um, as well, so that every single CT pathway, you are simultaneously earning your six hours of dual credit, and you're getting your certifications, okay. um, or one or both, or, you know, hopefully yeah, my both. Short, again, my short time at Paris, we were partnered with Harrison, and the guy there was great. He's actually at Locust Trace and uh, Fayette yeah. County now. Um, I had a friend that worked at Locust Trace as well, Logan yeah. Lane. I don't know if you know him, but. I, I don't, but um, he. Um, he kind of opened that understanding of CTE for me because we had very few pathways before I got here. And again, Trailblazer has started since we, um, since, since I've been here. So, um, but that's what kids need. They need to see the paths exist. They need to be able to explore. They need to complete something, have those industry certs. Um, that's what I'm trying to embed with within all, each of ours right now. But it, it's so hard being in a small district with those limited resources. Sure. And like I said, I'm more than happy to just send an email and be like, hey, one awesome person, meet this other awesome person <laughs> that loves kids and wants all the things yeah. um, because she is great. She is an advocate. She really lives in the work uh, Dr. Green does. And um, I mean, if anything, just a, a professional conversation that might be of benefit to somebody, but um, I'll definitely connect you uh, after the interview for sure. I'll just CC on the email. Awesome. But yeah, I, I absolutely. I mean, it's all about helping the kiddos. So uh, moving on, there's just a couple of other questions, if you don't mind. Um, and that is uh, moving into student agency voice and choice. Now, you've mentioned programs, obviously, that are very student agent based, you know, student agency based and initiated and preference and personalization, all of that. But what do you do as a instructional leader that ensures educators in the classrooms at your school prioritize that in their instruction and in the environment that is created? Um, our big thing, and I'll attest, we haven't done a good job of it this year, just coming off of um, the pandemic and getting back into in-person instruction and building a schedule that accommodates everything, uh, something that slipped through the cracks, but our GLTs are so important. Um, and from those, we'll try to do data digs to understand, and that's the great thing about Summit, it's all right there. Um, we can see how students are progressing, how they're responding to feedback. Um, if, if they're behind on their focus areas, which is a little more content-based, or their projects, which is a little more um, that, that classroom checkpoint base. Um, we try to focus on uh, student groupings, um, so teachers are understanding how to facilitate those needs of students. Um, and, and leverage their time to um, uh, get students to grow in the direction they need and always have that growth mindset, always push beyond um, their capacity, understanding um, where students are um, and, and how we can move them to the next level within their ZPD. Yeah. Um. With that being said, have you ever encountered, I'm sure you have maybe in this role or another role, um, some naysayers, if you will, or negative Nancy's in the work. And like, how have you kind of met that resistance and kind of built that understanding and partnership with that other person to, to maybe come around? Maybe they don't, not everybody does, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, some people are just who they're gonna be. Um, but have you ever encountered that? And how did you kind of address it? Um, collective buy-in is the route we went when we first launched. 
um, and really just coming together as a team and developing solutions as a team um, was the most successful strategy we implemented. Um, again, I, I'll attest to the, the challenges we're facing now. Um, I think a lot of those are created because we haven't had that ability through um, where we were virtual in the pandemic, where we were teaching almost in isolation, we weren't coming together and we weren't having those group group think times. And you've been able to see the um, buy-in dwindle some just because of that. Um, so I've been working with my instructional coaches and that's one thing as we develop what the close of this year looks like and really planning for next year to um, what does that complete reset looks like? How do we come back together? How do we analyze our, our new challenges and develop those solutions together to, to gain that buy-in again? Um, and then going back kind of to you specifically, and I know for me, it's hard to be like, oh, I'm, I did this and I really helped that. And I, Cause I think a lot of times as educators, we're like, we just do the things that need to be done. We're not looking for the spotlight per se, but since this is your spotlight <laughs> um, interview, literally, um, what do you feel has been your greatest impacts maybe, or your early wins in your time at Frankfurt high school or at the district level too, either or. Um, what I would hang hopefully hang my hat on is those access to opportunities for our students. Um, a lot of Mr. Lyon's work was resetting the foundation because our Frank I wasn't in a great place eight years ago. Um, and, and we got that collective buy-in. He was really focused on changing the culture, um, getting kids to love school. Um, and, and we've seen a lot of that growth. As I said, a, a third of our, our population has increased a third um, since when he first started. Uh, those numbers are huge. Um, so really it's how do we provide those, continue to provide that access to opportunities for all those students and, and keep the individualized approach we've always had. Okay, so last question, uh, where do you see yourself in the moving forward stage? I know you just mentioned crafting your master schedule, keeping that personalization at the focus opportunity, you know, driven student opportunity driven at the focus in the center. But if you had your next three year plan, what does that look like at Frankfurt High? Um, I think it, it kind of goes back to what you said about your um, culinary classroom and, and building a system that lasts. Um, we Mr. Lyons was a transformational leader here at Frankfurt High. Um, how do we solidify the work we've done into those systems that can carry us forward year after year after year and Frankfurt High can become and be known as exactly what we want it to be. Okay. Just a quick question. Is there any chance that you have a picture of those three kiddos you mentioned with their, like holding their certs? Uh, yes, I know so the one graduated, but is there I any chance? I believe I do. Yay! Yeah. So I'll, I'll be able to find it and send it to you. Okay. That would be awesome. Yeah. If you wouldn't care, uh, I would love any pictures that you would like um, utilized. If you want to send five of them and be like, you know, this would be awesome to feature this part of the work or which have you. Um, I'd love any pictures you're willing to share. And then even though we're not going to share the zoom, like in this setting right. with people to be able to listen to, um, it's going to be those snapshots on an infographic. Do you mind to sign that media release just so that I have proof to say, you said these things in the infographic that I make. I, I will. I okay, will thank sure. you. I just wanted to make sure because I didn't want to, I mean, at the end of the day, I know as educators, we're like one more piece of paper. <laughs> Obviously, right. if I got on a Zoom call, you had my permit, but you know, UK rules. So I just want to make sure I'm <laughs> checking all the boxes. No worries. All right. Well, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to talk to you. And obviously, Frankfurt High is in great hands. Um, clearly. That. Yeah, um, just you can tell the passion too, which is so awesome because it's hard sometimes, especially in the, the, these years that we've been in to right. not just be so burnt out and, and be so stuck that you're like, I know that there is light. I'm just, the tunnel is so long. Um, right. but yeah, that commitment's huge. So it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, All right. Well, I, will I hope our you. paths cross again sometime yeah. and we'll see each other around. Hey, you never know. There might be a position posted in the summer. You know, right. anything could happen. <laughs>
I do always tell my husband, John, because we've always, our, our careers, we've always worked outside of Frankfurt. We've, Absolutely. I was born and raised in Frankfurt. He moved to Frankfurt in middle school. And so we've been there forever. And uh, we're high school sweethearts as well. Met in the lunch line at Franklin County High School. Really romantic story. <laughs> um, but I tell him all the time, I'm like, you know, one day maybe we'll actually work in the community in which we live. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> maybe one day. Um, but I will certainly uh, send that email just as soon as we get off here to connect you to Dr. Green. Oh, and uh, let you guys take it from there. And I hope that that's helpful too. All right. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Have a great rest of your week. You too. Bye.